in this video, we come back to the circuit of the last video. And we did a step-by-step -step build of that. I'm just going to quickly mention that the timing right now is set, of course, by the capacitor value. But also we have at the output here a 220 ohm resistor that connects to the light-dependent resistor. And uh, based on how much light is falling on the light-dependent resistor, controls how much resistance there is. There's a light-dependent resistor plus 220 ohms for uh, charging and uh, discharging. So, since it's coming from the output, if the uh, output gave uh, equal but opposite voltages, because when it's charging, it's giving a positive voltage, when it's discharging in relationship to the capacitor, it's got a lower voltage or a negative voltage. And uh, so voltages swap in directions. That's why the capacitor is charging or discharging. Voltage is changing across the uh, resistor and the light dependent resistor to be most accurate. Unfortunately, the NE555 timer, this is an LMC555 timer, the NE555 timer does not output all the way to the positive rail. So it's six volts there and uh, the capacitor is charging into four, two thirds of the supply voltage, and then down to two volts, one third of the supply voltage. That's what the 555 timer normally does. And uh, it doesn't output though six volts. So there's not as big of a voltage difference when it's charging from one third to uh, two thirds as when it's discharging from uh, two thirds to one third, because then it has a four volt uh, difference. It does go all the way to the negative rail for the most part. And so more current flows through the resistors and it goes faster. Hope that makes sense. So now we're going to look at the next demonstration. So there's the uh, cable with the uh, alligator clips at the other end. I just clipped them to the jumpers and then put the jumpers to the points that I'm measuring. So we got ground there, zero volts. In relationship to that, we see the voltage at the uh, red jumper right there. So what I'm going to do, since the uh, output is powering the capacitor, to charge and discharge and also the LEDs that uh, may influence how much it can output so might change the voltage slightly but as you can see if I remove the LEDs it's still doing pretty good so the LEDs were not throwing off the timing in any meaningful way now we're gonna zoom a little closer as I said before this is the LMC 555 timer so that resistor comes from the output I uh, don't know where any other light dependent resistors are at the moment so I'm just going to shuffle that one and uh, we have to move the jumper attached to the oscilloscope there to uh, get our measurement so now you're going to see of course it's a 555 timer it has the same voltage range of uh, two thirds of the supply voltage which is four volts and a one third and you can see it's doing pretty good right now compared to the NE555 timer dropping that voltage. So when the green LED is lit, because we got positive supply there, goes through the LED, the resistor, to the output, that goes pretty much directly to ground. But uh, we're not getting that five volts again. In fact, it's doing worse. But that is actually why I bought the LMC555 timer, a CMOS version of the 555 timer, because it can output uh, both rails. The problem is the power it has to provide for the load it can only provide so much current and I think it's only like 10 milliamps when the uh, output is high whereas I think it can go 50 milliamps when the output is low so it's having a really easy time discharging the capacitor it can get to ground really easy but it seems to be struggling to get to uh, 5 volts so what we're gonna do yank the LEDs again and now we can see that uh, it's almost a triangle wave. There's a little bit of a curve. I think it has to be a ramp. I think the lines have to be straight to be an official triangle wave. But uh, there you can see the voltage is rising and dropping pretty much spot on the same amount of time. So what we see on the display here is what you see on that little uh, gray bar there. And uh, so we got all that much more information. I could uh, scroll back if I wanted to, but uh, we're just gonna keep seeing this. You're going to see that get closer and closer to being uh, either slightly above or slightly below 50% at uh, some point. And uh, as it fills up all that information there, and I don't disturb the light of the light-dependent resistor. So without a load, 
we could not get this waveform with the NE555 timer. It still wasn't reaching the positive supply voltage with no load. The load wasn't really influencing it at this level. This is fairly low current for that 555 timer. Whereas this uh, 555 timer, the CMOS version, outputting uh, 10 milliamps when it was more positive, uh, I think that was the maximum. So I think it was having to cut voltage uh, by quite a bit. And so we weren't getting that voltage to charge the resistor. But if you don't have a load, then it does pretty good at uh, providing uh, an even 6 volts in this case, since it's a 6 uh, volt supply and uh, 0 volts. So that's really it for uh, this demonstration right here. So hopefully that all made sense and you enjoyed the video. Check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, and all that. Uh, check out the links in the description. I put a link to Patreon if you can donate to that. That would help out a ton. I'll see you in the next video.